Okay. So in the 70s, you came to uh, LA for the first time. Mm -hmm. and, and so you probably had a reason to come here. Uh, I don't know what the reason was, but, but how, was, how did it strike you in the 70s? Because I have no idea how, how LA was in the 70s. Oh. Uh, we know it from movies, but, but yeah. it must have been really exciting. Hey, well, you know, with the old cars running, uh, driving around. And but you know, it was the, my first time coming to LA in the 70s, really, my aunt brought me here to go to a Jackson 5 concert. I, oh, the Gramblers game. The football uh, game oh, and the okay. Jackson 5 was going to be there. Oh, okay. And so we, my aunt is real bold. She knows how to get backstage and, and convince people that she's <laughs> a movie star or something. <laughs> and so we walked straight to the field, the big field, the great, at the stadium where it's in L.A. And, and my, uh, my aunt, we see the Silvers, that was a singing group at that time. They were sitting on the, on the grass. And, but we get to my eyes and said, Where, where's the Jackson 5? We didn't know, we just walked past them. And that was when the Jackson 5 had the big, it was the big Jackson 5 okay. main, main uh, Was that like early 70s? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and when they first came, they were, uh, yeah. people was uh, uh, screaming and whatever. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, they brought the Jackson 5 on the field and people said, I look like Jermaine Jackson. Oh, okay. And he was yeah. a popular more than Michael then. Yeah, yeah. Was, the big afro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. So, and uh, did you have an afro as well? Uh -huh, I oh, okay. Oh, okay. So in Wonderful. high school, I was considered a very handsome guy, and they would say I look like the Jackson Five, and um, so the Jackson Five were bottom of the field, and but the people mobbed them, and my aunt grabbed my hand to go through the tunnel mm -hmm. when they were putting the Jackson Five back to get them from the people, but um, I somehow I got got close to the door. And I got nervous, and I just stopped. My aunt said, come on, we could have got in and been in the same room with Jackson 5. I just got nervous and froze and stuff right there. So, but that was my first time reason going to L.A., but it was the weather. It was, at nighttime, it was hot. I, I liked it, the weather. I said, I'm moving here. I really? probably was in 11th grade mm -hmm. when that time, but... My whole goal was to move there. So like in 78, I, after I got out of high school, I came out here to visit. And I, I remember being on Hollywood, I would just walk down Hollywood. I really thought I was just going to get famous from walking down Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> like, like somebody was going, Childhood dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I was surprised. Fortunately, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, I was surprised at the homeless people. Was it that bad already? But, you, but as you told, it was yeah. actually on the boulevard. Mm -hmm. At uh, they didn't run them off the street like yeah. they eventually did once they built the Kodak Theater. Yeah. But um, they would be at the bus stop just with their stuff, and but they looked so artistic, like creative, but tore up, uh -uh. like a like a tore up version of Marilyn Monroe. The lady's hair would be still bleached, and her yeah. makeup would be. And was there already a big dr a drug problem? Uh, because I remember, and the, they told me when I came in the nineties, that in the eighties that was really bad in Hollywood. Um, you know what? Yeah. Uh, that's interesting you asked me because, like in the seventies, I only smoked weed. Yeah. But when they came to L.A., L.A. did chemical. They, they were like PCP. Oh, really? Angel dust. Oh. They was more caught up on chemical drugs. Because uh -huh. I'm from Berkeley, ours was more natural, you know, like yeah, 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 yeah. mushroom. The hippie stuff, yeah. Yeah, and so, but it was a lot going on, but I wasn't that caught up in caring about drugs no, no, yeah, sure. like I mean. that at that time. I was more fascinated about being a movie star or the, the Hollywood yeah. like that. Yeah. So, but in this, and I then I moved here uh, to LA in 78 thinking I was going to stay the way I'm staying now. But after I ran out of money or whatever, it probably happened within a year. I just <laughs> That's really up. good. <laughs> That's not bad, I think. <laughs> I, 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 I said, oh, let me get out of here. And, and, but it was different style of homeless, mm -hmm. homelessness. And it really from people whose spirits were broken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And who came here with dreams and when they got here and they didn't fulfill, because, you know, Hollywood is really the, like an orphan's home of all the black sheep of the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anybody who's a star in their neighborhood or at school or in their family thought they could come to Hollywood yeah. and be, blow up. And what it is, they came here and there's a lot of them were here. Mm -hmm. there and, and All of a sudden you're less unique. Yeah, you, <laughs> yes. And so um, when I first came here, I used to come here and try to be Hollywood. And that's what it was 
It was like, and nobody didn't see it. Because in the Bay Area, I used to walk around the lake and always walking. And people were hollering, you need to be in Hollywood. They said, or they always complimented my presence and said, you deserve to be in Hollywood. But when I got in Hollywood, I came in with that same naturalism. Mm -hmm. And nobody paid no attention. But as soon as I start wearing gaudy jewelry and uh, fake stuff, I got more attention. And it's like, they don't want to see you real, real, like really beautiful skin, really beautiful hair, really natural jewelry. They, they want the showmanship. Mm -hmm. So when I start dyeing my hair and wearing it a while and putting makeup on, it, got, it drew more attention to me. Mm -hmm. But, it's, but um, then when I came back here again, I said, I'm not going to be a part of it. I'm bringing Berkeley with me. And when I came out here, just be, I didn't care about fitting in. I was going to bring, keep what I am of mm -hmm. Berkeley. And that's when things are happening more for me. Because I stayed Berkeley with the gaudiness. Mm -hmm. Like I stayed natural with the fake jewelry. In Berkeley, I would never wear it. Like jewelry. Jewelry. Like, like costume jewelry. Mm -hmm. It had to really be silver or gold or whatever. Uh, right. Uh, real stones like that, but I love uh, uh, costume jewelry now, mm -hmm. like that, because I can play. I actually like it better than expensive jewelry because mm -hmm. it's more fun and more pretty. But um, at, in the 80s, the homeless still wasn't mm -hmm. strong. It still was the early 80s. It still was. Uh, artists homeless. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That all of a sudden, like 84, 85, it start homeless start picking up like it was anybody on the street. Yeah, yeah. And to me now, it's more like like it's a fad. Yeah, yeah. Like that. It's like it's like and, and, and when you're homeless, you don't have. I remember my sister. My sister came here and she got homeless because she was on drugs. Mm -hmm. And when my aunt seen her, uh, they said, "Oh, she was. She smelled and her hair was all over her head because she was a person who always had her hair fixed and all that kind of creative looking." But I said that goes with homeless, mm -hmm. and so there's nothing to be sad about. Yeah, sure. It's like ain't no way in the world you're gonna see homeless people hair all hooked up, sleeping yeah. in the tent. Yeah, that's part of the image. So mm -hmm. it looks sad. Yeah. But it's not to me as sad as it looks.